Welcome to the Panzer Athletic Center, where Montclair State men's basketball will be playing three six-minute intra-squad scrimmages. Here with you today from the Red Hawk Sports Network, I am Sonny Bartell alongside my partner Jonathan Edmond. And just to take a quick second away from basketball, we would like to send our thoughts and prayers to our fellow intern, George Jamgochian, who was recently diagnosed with leukemia. Our hearts are with you and your family at this tough time. A great colleague and an even better person. Get better soon, George. Yeah, man, our hearts and minds are with you, George. We love you, and we know that you're going to come back better and stronger, my guy. Here today, Montclair will have three different scrimmages, and let me tell you, John, it's just great to see the guys playing again and great to be back calling games again on the Red Hawk Sports Network after a long, long layoff. Sonny, we've been locked up and thrown in the slammer for eight months. It's great to hear the sweet sound of the net go swish today. Today is a great day, my friend. Just a quick recap from last year for the Red Hawks. Montclair posted an 11-14 record last year under coach Justin Potts, his first season with MSU after coaching at Moravian College for four successful seasons. John, Montclair is missing a few familiar faces, but are also bringing some key guys back along with some talented freshmen into the mix. Yes, Sonny, this team has lo lost four key players who were seniors. Just to name a few, Sonny Justin Porter, was a great defensive player, was very good at picking the pocket and can score efficiently. Eddie, he was a forward, could really bang with the best of them down low, averaged nine points a game and about four rebounds. Nate Nahiri, who was a sharp shooting three-point god, who averaged 10 points per game during the season. Jalen Parham, honorable mention, all in Jack, was a dominant forward for the Red Hawks, averaging 12 points, about five rebounds last season, while adding the team, having the team best, 22 block shots, and he also shot 59 and a half percent from the field, which was the seventh highest in program history. And just to mention, there are a few freshmen that is coming on the team as well, which is Karen Flanagan from Manasquan, New Jersey, Derek Golden from Plainfield, New Jersey, Amari Mills from East Strasburg, Pennsylvania, Kaleem Lambert from Hillside, New Jersey, Francisco Paulino from North Bergen, New Jersey, and Amir Williams from the Bronx, New York. An important player to talk about this season, although he's not suiting up, Miles Mitchell White, the junior guard, 5'11", 185, out of Lawrence High School. He played with Montclair State in 2017-2018. Yes, sir. Won Rookie of, the, Rookie of the Year award, and in 2018-2019 was named all NJAC second team. The guy can really play, averaged 14.9 points per game that season while also shooting the ball at a 38.2% clip from three-point range. You know, he left Montclair State for the Christian Brother Bucks in return. That just shows you how much the students over here can't get enough, Sonny. Who are some other guys you're looking forward to seeing today and uh, coming up in the season? I know, obviously, the season doesn't start till springs, but some of the guys, you know, that our listeners could, you know, look forward to watching play. Me? Um, I'm actually looking forward to see Keon Price play. Keon came in last year, was a freshman, now he's a sophomore. I kind of want to see what he's going to give this season. You know, he got playing time, didn't get much playing time last season because, you know, we had a whole bunch of seniors on the squad and all that stuff. But coach let us know that right now there's a battle for the point guard position on this team. Yeah, we talked to Coach Potts along with Amir Williams and Irvin Callender the fourth. Uh, last night on a Zoom call, and he said, although they, they are missing a couple key players, it's going to be a collective effort as it was last year for the Montclair State Red Hawks, as they have some talented freshmen coming in, as you mentioned, and they have some guys who are going to be playing, you know, didn't get a lot of playing time last season, who are going to be playing as well. So, um, just a few things about the recap from last year. Montclair State, their season record was 11-14, and 9-9 and in, uh, at home points per game averaged 84.4 points per game and coach pod said when he came here that that was one of the things that he was a little bit nervous about the scoring turns out that that wasn't the thing that they really they were been, actually great sonny they shouldn't have been worrying about um their opponents averaged around 86.5 points per game that's a thing that he wants to see yep. a little bit better a little bit better defense defensive rebounding and also taking control of the ball taking care of the ball that's what he said yesterday on the call he just said that they have to limit their turnovers fix their footwork as you're going to see them, whoever's watching on the screen, you're going to be able to see them work on their pivots to make sure that they don't get any traveling calls, and they just need to make sure they pass it in the pocket correctly. Yeah, and last year they set records with three-pointers made. They hit 275 threes, 34% from downtown, averaging 11 threes per game. Oh my God. Can you expect that this season from this team? I mean, they're missing a couple good shooters, but I mean. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think they actually made up for it. There's a lot of freshmen who's came in that can really, really, really shoot the ball. You got Amir, 
Amir Williams, who can shoot the ball really good. Francisco Paulino. Now, what I'm actually looking forward to, the game of basketball has transitioned from inside the paint, from the mid-range area, all the way to the three-point line. I, I, I'm going to tell you, Sonny, I've been watching basketball. It was a game. I was watching. It was against the Bucks in Miami. For the first five minutes of the game, all I've seen was three-pointers. I'm trying to see who's going to really dominate from inside, dominate from the mid-range jumper, because what we're missing today are those key guys that can really sit in the paint, get wide open buckets, and just drop them down. And some of those key guys, I mean, they have some, there's some size on this team. Danny Lane, 6'9", 205 pounds. Malachi Smith, a big 6'6", 205 pounds out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I mean, they have some guys who can really bang down low. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting mix of, you know, inside-out game. Um, and, you know, we talked to, to Irvin Callender, a senior, kind of a leader for this team yesterday on the Zoom call. And he says that, you know, even during a long, long layoff, the chemistry is there for this team. They've really been, you know, getting together during the pandemic, talking, working out, doing as much as they can. How do you think, you know, the camaraderie has changed, you know, after a long layoff? It's got to be tough, but it seems like, you know, the chemistry is still there. Actually, Irving said that the camaraderie is the best that he's ever been a part of here on this team. He feels that being a senior now is one of the, as being the teammates are actually looking up to him. Right now, he feels that he's becoming a better leader, and he feels like it's time for him to lead by example and not by word. Coach Potts, as we mentioned, coached at Moravian College for four seasons, won them an NCAA tournament yes. game, first time in their, uh, in their college, you know, history. A couple of things he instills in these young men is habits, the acronym HABITS, as he said on the Red Hawk Sports Network show, done by our Jack Bartek, a fellow intern. Great guy. Coach says, first you make your habits, and your habits make you. Now he breaks them down and says, H is for heart, A for appreciation, B, brotherhood, I, invest, T, toughness, and S, sacrifice. Do you see that from this team? And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, them kind of take control of, uh, you know, being an extension from the coach on the floor. What's amazing to me is that Coach Potts doesn't only care about these guys on the court. He cares about them off the court as well. He doesn't only care about the game of basketball. He does monthly Hawk Talks where he brings in monthly speakers to discuss finance, social justice, leadership, and much more. What a guy. Yeah, and I'm just excited. Like, we mentioned, you know, the long layoff for them. I'm just happy to be back calling games here at Panther Athletic Center, watching them warm up. Again, there will be three six-minute segments intra-squad scrimmages. Uh, we will go over this again, but just for now, for the gray team, you will have number zero, Kieran Flanagan, five foot 11, freshman guard out of Manasquan, New Jersey. Irvin Countlander the fourth, Francisco Paulino, Amir Williams, Tim Alginio, and Devin Cooper rounding it out for the gray team. Again, this is for the first scrimmage. And for the white team, you'll have Keon Price, Derek Golden, Joseph Rowdy, Christian Booker, TJ Schneider, Malachi Smith, and Danny Lane. And guess what? At the end of it all, we're going to have an amazing, amazing dunk contest. Yes, our dunk contest, which we will have some judges. I don't know. The judges, I think, will be some of our interns. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they don't pull a Dwayne Wade and give a 9 when the dunk clearly should be a 10. That might be me. <laughs> and the dunk contest participants will be Malachi Smith. Amir Williams, Derek Golden, and Christian Booker. Who do you have winning that dunk contest? Who's your early favorite? I mean, me, I've never seen one of these guys dunk before in my life. But if I have to go with somebody, I feel like Derek Golden might surprise some people. My pick is Smythe just off the size. But <laughs> who knows? Yeah, I haven't seen too much yet, but the season's young, and it should be very interesting. Just a couple um, things to mention uh, the players that are not playing today. We mentioned Miles Mitchell White yes. earlier, very talented guard. Amari Mills will not be suiting up today. Colleen Lambert, Stephen Bremen, a sharpshooter from Denver. And right now, the guys are just warming up, getting ready for the scrimmage. So we actually have a, a guide to the practice today. At 617, we will have our first segment. Um, then 626 to 632, our second segment. 635 to 641, our third segment. And 641, our dunk contest. 
And right now we have Peter Uberton Jr. with us here. Can you hear us, Peter? Are you with us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. How are you doing so far today? I'm good. I'm good. Can't complain. Thank what you. A- yeah, sorry. Thank you for taking the time to, you know, be here with us and uh, doing this interview. Obviously, there's been a long layoff with the team and sports in general. How excited are you guys to be back, you know, having these high-intensity scrimmages, practicing again with the team? Um, we're very excited because, as you see everything going on, a lot of teams don't have this chance right now because they're getting shut down and a lot of people are getting, you know, the virus is really affecting their program. So for us, it's very, uh, we're very, we're in a great situation today to be able to do this because just a lot of people aren't doing this today. And we're very thankful to be in the situation that we are. As a senior on this team, how does how has your role changed so far? Um, as a senior, uh, especially during these times, it's hard to because right now we would be scrimmaging and playing already like against other teams. So to really get these younger guys up to speed at during these times, uh, you have to really lead by example and show them what's really important right now. How partying isn't important and doing all the other things that are getting everybody caught up in bad situations and just to focus on getting better on and off the court right now because that's the most important thing. And we talked to another senior yesterday on a Zoom call, Irvin Callender, the fourth. He mentioned how the seniors on his team are really taking it upon themselves to maintain the chemistry and the camaraderie. Um, how would you grade like the chemistry going on? Obviously, it's tough, but he says it's the best it's ever been. I think we have a great... Uh, senior class this year uh we're very dedicated to the program we've been together since uh coach sears and when we were freshmen so we stuck through a lot of highs and lows together and being seniors during these times we really just put it upon ourselves to whatever we end up having whatever type of season to really try to get the most out of it so i really agree with him about our senior leadership because we really want uh, whatever we end up doing whatever type of championship whatever tournament we could do we want to win it all so uh, the goal is very straightforward throughout and one more question before we get started here who do you think is going to win the dunk contest tonight we'll have to see who got the freshest legs but um i'm gonna have to go with my senior teammate malachi smythe number 31 over there that was my pick yeah Yeah. he he went with uh who did he go he went with Derek golden so i mean anyone could win it i yeah i agree but um, actually, one more question before we let you go. Uh, what can the team, or what? how long have you guys been practicing, first of all? Uh, well, like the second week of school, we started going outside, uh, like captain-led practices. So we would go to a park nearby that has a court, and we would do a bunch of conditioning and playing ourselves. So we've been going at it ever since uh, school started. And then I know we've been... I think a little over a month now we've been practicing as a team and we've had we've had some weeks where you have to take an off because of uh, yeah so um we we've been practicing for over a little over a month and to piggyback off of that question we talked with coach Potts yesterday he said taking care of the ball defensive rebounding are two main things as well as you know making the other team work for baskets three pointers not putting them on the free throw, mi- free throw line as much are those things you would like to see from the team as well yeah that's uh that's where our uh, offense and our energy comes from getting stops on defense because you could go easily go on like an 8-0 10 nothing run in in a matter of seconds so it's very important for us to bring the energy and the stops on defense because that makes the offense way easier all right well we'd like to thank you peter for joining us by here all right, thank you guys yeah, for having you. me. Yep. And you just heard it right there from Peter. We're expecting some big things from the Red Hawk this season, Sonny. And as you mentioned, the senior leadership, that's another person who yes, said, sir. you know, we have a lot of, they have a lot of freshmen coming in, you know, some, t- some talented guys, you know, uh, so also guys that, you know, we mentioned didn't get a lot of playing time last year, but it's the seniors that are really looking to take control of the team, and that's always a good thing. Yeah, the seniors are taking control of the team, and the freshmen is actually listening and taking the advice. Amir Williams, when we were on the call with him yesterday, he says that the transition from high school to college is very different. 
the pace of the game and having to wake up early for class and having to make it to practice is very hard. But he says that the seniors, the coaches, they stay on them head on. And it, I can see, like, it's really helping them out right now. You know your team is locked in and, you know, the coaches and staff is doing their job when during a pandemic everyone still seems to be yeah. engaged and locked in. Uh, it can't be easy. I mean, it, it's hard for everyone out here. But for a basketball team to go through this, you know, all the uncertainty, especially for freshmen, yes. making the transition, like you said, from high school to college, is really impressive. I don't know. My, my nerves are just going off right now because we're actually about to see a basketball scrimmage in this gym, and we haven't seen that since March. Can you believe it? It's crazy. You never know in 2020. You never know. You never know. You never know. And right now, I guess they're starting to get ready for the scrimmage. Again, we will go over the um, the starting lineup for the, se the six-minute segment, uh, the first one. Uh, Kieran Flanagan, Irvin Callender, the fourth, Francisco Paulino, Amir Williams, Tim Alginio, Devin Cooper. And for the white team, you have Keon Price, Derek Golden, Joseph Raddy, the sniper from distance. Oh, yeah. What a player he is. Christian Booker, TJ Schneider, Malachi Smythe, and Danny Lane, the big man from Ridgefield Park. Joseph Raddy, he's a senior forward. He's 6'6 six, six and weighs 210. He can really bang down low. He averaged six and a half points last season. He can really, really, really stretch the floor and shoot it. He had the team's best 45 three pointers last season and shot 39% from deep. Impressive numbers. And here we go as the teams are looking to take the court. Finally, Red Hawk basketball is back underway. Even though it's an intra-squad scrimmage, we'll take anything for now. Oh, we'll take anything. Yeah. I mean, it's been a long layoff for us as well. Yeah. You know? We haven't been calling games since March, and here we go. What are you looking for towards most in this scrimmage, Sonny? Just the things that Coach mentioned, uh, Coach Potts mentioned, you know, taking care of the ball, defensive rebounding. Good defense, you know, pressuring the ball. Let's see if the three-pointers, you know, the pace that they play at. Is it, you know, it's always interesting to see a scrimmage. And here we go. The tip goes to the white team. Keon Price takes the ball up. Guarded by Alginia. Price, the long two, no good. Price misses, gets the offensive rebound, tries to kick it out. Excellent shot selection there by Keon Price. Right now, they're a little still raggedy. They're trying to get the tempo up to things. Off the screen is Christian Booker. Christian Booker looking to make a play. Booker on the tough take, rims out. Rebound by Callender, and they're coming down. Paulino, little stop and pop. Excellent shot right there by Paulino. He can really use his body to bang down low and get his shot off quick. Raddy, there's that three-pointer. No good. Players are a little jittery here. You can't blame them. Rebound by Amir Williams from Linden. Alginio, the senior guard out of Bergen Catholic High School, brings the ball up to Callender. Look for Williams to look for his shot. Missed. Right Missed now, it. still a little cold in the arena. He's going to get it going. Paulino, a little 10-foot jump shot. No good. That's what I was talking about before. Paulino can really shoot it from the mid-range once he spots up. Ratty with the ball up top. Looks to get it to a guard. Got to look deep. Ooh. Nice tip right there by Paulino. He was about to get posted up. Very quickly has awareness on the defensive end. Play will continue with Keon Price up top with the ball. Going to bang with him down low. Puts it up. Smite a little turnaround post up shot off the glass and in. My goodness, what a sweet, sweet turnaround. Hooked it in for two. The gray team gets into their set. Calendar a little step back a la James Harden. Ooh, that was an excellent move from Calendar, but you got just you just gotta set your feet before you let the shot release. 
Ooh, nearly, nearly, nearly got him in the corner right there for a three, but an excellent tip by, pass by Callender. And right there, Callender showing us that defense matters, and you can never be too late on defense. Right there, got a bad shot off, but ran all the way back and got the pass tipped. Long rangey frame at six foot five, one seventy five. Good God. Senior guard slash forward. <laughs> TJ Schneider comes into the team onto the court with, for the gray team. Guarding Derek Golden. Nice screen nice. right there. Nice take. Joseph Raddy using the screen, dishing it down low for the two-handed jam. Beautiful drop-off pass. Malachi with an excellent jam. And Callender finds the range from three. Callender, once you get him, let him get hot, it's really hard to stop him. Malachi missed. The rebound by Paulino. Excellent take by Malachi. Callender looking to push in transition. And play will stop as he gets the foul call. Foul down low, Callender. Excellent, they can really move the ball well on a fast break, Sonny. And that's a play right there that I, I think, I mean, I'm guessing, but I think coach, you know, can't live with. You know, an easy pass, pass ahead, couple dribbles and right to the basket. You would like to see some better defense out of Montclair State and the white team right there. And at the line right now, Callender, let me tell you something. Every single season, he has improved on his free throw. Freshman year, he was 57%. Next year, he made it to 63%. And an errant Left. pass there by Rowdy as it goes out of bounds. Great team will take over. And last year, he shot at the free throw line for 64%. Right now, he's just progressing from 57. He made it up 6%. Sophomore season, he had 63, and right now he's shooting 64%. That's incredible. Very impressive for Callender. Callender looking for that shot again off the screen. In and out. Missed it. Rebound. He's looking to get it to Peon Price. Excellent shot by Callender there. Just didn't go in. Price, eyes always looking up, looking for the shooter, Derek Golden. Missed it. Rebound by Callender. Caroms off the front rim. That shot by Schneider blocked. Get that big stuff out of here. <laughs> Back out to Schneider, second time. A little strong, yes. Danny Lane with the rebound. Danny Lane, excellent rebound. Clearing the boards right now. And he's gonna be huge for them if they wanna rebound the ball at six foot nine. Backdoor cut, Christian Booker passes back out to Danny Lane. Ooh, look at the moves from the big fella. I thought we were going to see a little spin move. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were going to get a one-legged fadeaway like Dirk Nowitzki. <laughs> Alginio, head up, looking for a play. Blocked by Danny Lane. That was engulfed. Swallowed up out of there. Tried to take it down. Danny Lane says, not in my house. Gets it out of here, and they're going to take it out from the side. You can see the players with their hands above their head. They're a little <laughs> bit tired. Of Again, you can't blame the long layoff. I mean... You've been practicing, but, you know, this is a high-intensity scrimmage. As, you know, first time out has been called. Let me ask you a question, son. Do you play basketball? Played a little bit. Did not competitively like this. Not as good as these guys. But I had the chance to play competitively, and they told me one morning that I was going to have to wake up at 8 a.m. to come to practice. I said, it's a done deal. I'm not doing it. That was it for your career? That's when I knew that I was just going to start talking about basketball. I couldn't take it. <laughs> Right now, it's 152 remaining. Score is 4-4. What have you seen so far that you like from Montclair? And what have you seen that, you know, they can improve on? Early? I know it's early, but... Right now, I love that they're passing the ball, trying to get it to the open men. They're not taking too much time on at the top of the key, getting their own isolation. They're trying to get everybody involved. But I'm seeing that they are a little bit too timid, too timid to take it inside, and they're looking for the foul call a little too much. I would agree with that assessment. I think... Players looking a little bit jittery, but, you know, yeah. um, the shots are just rimming out. I think once the shots are falling, they will find a rhythm. And, um, you know, the score is 4-4 right now. A minute and 52 seconds left in the first segment. And just, to, and just to let you know, these guys have been practicing with each other, so they know ev each and every person's move. Calendar looking for a shot really early again. Pull-up jumper past the... Free throw line, that's good. Calendar, Swish. excellent shot at the top of the key. 
Amir Williams back into the game. Found Pass out the to the corner. Tiptoeing on the sideline was Christian Booker. Hands by Calendar. Look, look what I said. He's going to finish it on the offensive end and get right back on it on the defensive end. Looked like a cornerback <laughs> jumping, the, jumping the gap there. That's what they're good at. They're good at the steals. They're good at forcing turnovers. They were better than their opponents last season. Price, a little double clutch shot. Then he got hit on the hand by Algenio. We'll get some free throws there. I think you see Keon Price, a six foot 175 guard out of Roselle Catholic. Same high school that produced Isaiah Briscoe. And he's from Union. I'm from Union as well. A little connection. <laughs> Played in all 25 games. Debut was against Whitman last November. Pass first guard, but looking to get his shot there. And he makes the free throw. In the last season, in the games that he's played, he's, he needs to look to improve in his, at the charity stripe, stripe this season. He was 6 of 13 last season. Look for him to play more and really get a feel for the game. That shot was swatted out of there by Raddy. Paulino looked like he had a shot, but Raddy, had, Raddy said otherwise. And that's going to stay right here. It was tipped out out of bounds. And right now you can see that they're really, really trying to look for Malachi to get him to go to work down low. The defensive intensity is picking up too. With just 50 seconds left in the first scrimmage. Nice looking jump shot there by Derek Golden off the front rim. Lead ahead pass to number 13. Amir Williams. Amir Good Williams, shot. the freshman guard out of Bronx, New York. With a nice lay in. He can run the floor tremendously, and he's, an, he's excellent, excellent at the rim. We were on the call yesterday, and I told him he didn't know about it, actually, as Joseph Raddy misses the three. Oh, oh good back by Malachi. He didn't know, actually, that he blocked my little brother in a high school game. That's a tough pill to swallow there, John. <laughs> I knew I was watching it, and I showed my brother, and my brother was upset that I was watching it. Nice pass. Bank shot in. Good for Derek Golden. Derek Golden has such a sweet stroke from mid-range. Can really knock it down for you. The half-court heave off the, back, off the backboard. As 10 to 8 here, home team, in favor of, I believe, the white team. It's a little hard to assess here. Yeah. With an <laughs> unconventional game here, as we're calling an inter-squad scrimmage. But nonetheless, it's better than what we were calling, which was nothing. So. Yes. And right now, in a little bit, we're going to have Sean Rosie to come in so we can give him a little interview and ask him about what he's been seeing so far and what he's like so far. Hi, Coach. Can you hear us? Yep, I got you. Thank you for taking the time, by the way. Um, of course. What have you seen so far in the first uh, first six minutes of the first scrimmage that you liked and some things that you need to improve on? Um, I think I'll start with the improvements. I think fatigue played a, a big role in some of the sloppiness. Um, you know, that's due to the circumstances. We, we just started to go live two days ago, so to actually get some live action uh, was good for us, but just not enough for us to really be in the, the type of shape that we need to be in to make sure we play clean basketball. Um, so I think... Playing a little bit less sloppy. Um, the spacing w was a little poor at times. Um, you know, trying to think when you're tired is a little bit difficult. So getting guys to the right spots on the break uh, was a little bit of an issue. But I think overall, I think the effort was really good. Um, even though they were tired, they were playing extremely hard. And it's hard to pick up full court and play that fast. And we're trying to get out in passing lanes one pass away. So it's difficult. But I think they did a good job of that. Um, and Despite some of the some of the sloppiness, I think uh, we, we moved the ball pretty well. We have an unselfish team. Um, I would like to see a little less pull up long twos and more catch and shoot threes at the perimeter. If not playing off your your, your pump fake and trying to get into the paint and score it. Uh, but overall, I think the effort was there. Um, we just need to execute a little bit better, and, and that'll come as we get in a little bit better shape. Just to we've asked Coach Potts already how he's been doing throughout this whole quarantine and trying to get well this whole COVID-19 and trying to get everybody together on this. How have you been doing and how has it been working for you personally? Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been great. It, it, there's not many teams in the country who 
especially in this area, who are doing anything right now. Um, so as, an, as a coach in general, um, you just want to be around your guys and, and you want to get that face-to-face -face interaction. Um, so to be able to be on the court and see our guys on a daily basis and kind of follow up with them regarding, you know, academics or, 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 or well-being, um, it's, 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 a, it's a privilege to be able to be back on the court. And I think five months ago, you weren't sure whether we were going to be here or not. Um, and I think the, the president of the university, um, our athletic, director of athletics, Rob Chesney, um, our associate director of athletics, Shan Howley, and, and Tara Temple and her athletic training staff have done an unbelievable job to make sure we're ha we have this opportunity. Um, and I'm just so thankful for that. You know, my, my, I don't call it a job. I call it a responsibility. Same with Coach Potts. We have the responsibility to be here for our guys, um, not just on the court, but off the court especially um, with academics and, and everything else. And it's just a privilege to be able to come to work, see our guys on a daily basis now, and, and get a chance for us to build that, that chemistry and, and be around them. That, that's the best part about it. Great. Thank you, Coach. Yep. We'll let you get back to the, to the scrimmage. Yeah. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're about to get to the second scrimmage. First scrimmage was actually pretty revealing. It showed us that, well, one downside is that they can get tired a little early, Sonny. Yeah, and I think, you know, you saw some, you know, quick shots. Like he said, some long twos. They're looking to get some, you know, catch and shoot threes. Yep. You know, they broke the record last year with threes, 275. And we they shot at a high percentage as we well. We all know that that definitely won't be a problem. Yeah, so um, I think... You know, I think we can also expect a fast-paced offense. You know, he mentioned fast-paced offense. You know, their conditioning will get there. I think they started to, you know, slow things down yeah. in the last couple of minutes of that, you know, first six-minute scrimmage. And, you know, you saw some better better plays, better results, better defense. And we'll see what we see in the second scrimmage. I'm telling you, the key thing right now is just the ball movement. The ball movement have been so pure so far. They know where their guys are at. There haven't been too. There's been a couple of turnovers, but not too many turnovers because they know where their guy is going. They know who they want to get the ball. They know who they want to go to the basket. So it's been really good for them so far. Yeah, how would you assess the guard play? It looks like you know Tim Algenia was senior. Keon Price a sophomore. Keon Price looks like he's learned a lot from Algenia. Yes. They both ha play a very similar style. You know, head up, looking uh, for fast break opportunities, looking for open shooters. How would you assess that so far in the first six minutes? Well, right now, from what I'm seeing from them, I love that they're being very aggressive. They're taking it to the rim, as we've seen right there. Algenio tried to take it into Danny Lane. He got it sw sw swatted, but still, he's still trying to take it to him. They're not afraid to take it to anyone on this team. They're not afraid to take it to anyone in the end jack. That's what I love. They got a lot of heart. <laughs> And Coach Paz just let <laughs> us know right now. He just asked us, do you know why I coach, right? We asked him why. He said, because I'm a bad official. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many fouls, though. Some good defense. Yeah. yeah they played well. Um, you know, that was a, one of the things that he stressed early, uh, you know, or in the Zoom call yesterday to us. Um, some pretty good defense. A couple errors there. But like we said, you know, late in that first scrimmage, I think, you know, they shared some of those things up. And right now the team's switching around. For the second segment, or second scrimmage, whatever you would like to call it, we have uh, the great team, Kieran Flanagan, Keon Price, Irvin Callender IV, Amir Williams, Raddy, Malachi Smith, and Devin Cooper. And for the white team, Derek Golden, Paulino, Alginio, Christian Booker, TJ Schneider, and Danny Lane. The tip easily won there by the six foot six Malachi Smith. <laughs> Gets it to the corner. Alexander is going to fight through the screen. Calendar, another e pull up, a little short there. TJ Schneider linked out, leaked out for the white team. No pass there as Alginio looks it to get it to Christian Booker. Corner three. Al Alginio's three rims out. Joseph Raddy with an excellent rebound right there, going up strong. Keon Price finds Raddy in semi-transition. Raddy with a strong right-hand take to the rim. Like I said, he can really do it both ways. He can take you inside and punish you inside, or he could really stress it out and make you have a hard day drilling threes in your face. If you're watching, the players are switching jerseys each yes. scrimmage. They're not making it easy on us here. Yes. <laughs> and they get one free throw per foul, per shooting foul, so Raddy will get one free throw here. 
And almost gets the fortuitous roll. Does not get it. Passes back out to Christian Booker, who gives it to Alginio. And right now, I'm unsure. I don't, oh yeah, you can kind of see it, the zone a little bit. The, person, the purpose of the zones that they're doing is to shrink the passing lanes to give up no layups and to put the pressure on that offense. Nice lead ahead pass. Great pass there to Malachi Smith by Irvin Cowan there. An excellent charge taken there by Paulinho. Falls to the ground and it's going to go the other way. Paulino is a freshman forward slash center, 6'5", 225 pounds out of North Bergen High School. Season high, 20 points, two times a senior year for North Bergen. Takes the great charge there. And that's just an effort play, like you mentioned. That's yes. just a great play. Coach, you, you know, that's a coach's dream right there. Every coach loves a player who's able to put his body on the line as he gives him a fist pump right yeah. in front of him. <laughs> You can see he loved that, and Callender wasn't too happy about it. Let Paulino hear it afterwards. A little bit of pressure here from the great team. The point of this, you really got to give it up to your quickest guard to come across the court. And that would be Alginio, who gives it to Schneider, who tight ropes the sideline. Right now, the defense has very good ball mm. denial. A little one-leg Dirk Nowitzki-style shot there from Paulino. I'm telling you, Paulino, once he gets fired up, it's really tough to stop him. Ratty, no hesitation, and gets the shooter's bounce on the three. Ratty is lights out from beyond the arc. It doesn't phase him. He's never going to hesitate to pop the three. Three to two here for the great team. Ratty being very confident in his shot early in this second scrimmage. Oh, as he took an elbow to the face. Mm. From Derek Golden. Hopefully he's okay. I believe he's okay, but they got the stop. That's good on their part. Got an excellent stop, threw it out of bounds. It's gonna go the other way. Ratty will take a seat on the bench. Just a quick little uh, quick little rest. As Amir Williams comes into the game for Ratty. Good defense here by Christian Booker. Denying the little pick and roll between Malachi Smith and Callender. And a nice, nice move there. Good God, that was Kieran Flanagan. He's from Manasquan, New Jersey. He played 29 games in those 19s. And, and out of those 19 in college, in high school, I'm sorry, he knocked down 19 or more threes. And that was Christian Booker on the pull up too as he gets it to go. And a nice lead ahead pass there to Malachi Smith who gets it to go. A much more fluid second scrimmage you're seeing here. Danny Lane back out to Derek Golden. Frenetic pace here as Danny Lane couldn't get the rebound. Right now they have to slow it down. They have to slow down. It's, I love that they're getting on the fast break, trying to get the ball to everyone going up, but at the same time, you really got to get a stop. Play stops here. I believe a foul was called. <laughs> It's a little tough when there's no officials. <laughs> like Coach said, he's not an official, he's a coach. But play does stop here with three minutes and 18 seconds left to go as Joseph Ratty comes back into the game for Irvin Callender, who takes a seat. And right now I see, for the Gray squad, I see they're going a lot towards Callender. Right now, with him out of the game, I want to see who else is going to step up. Callender has been running the offense for them. I want to see Keon Price give you a little. Try to dish it down to Malachi down low. Post play is something you don't you didn't see a lot of last year for Montclair. Even with Eddie Emmett though and yeah. Paron, you miss those guys and you want to see it even more this year. Great defense, good hands there. As passed out to Keon Price, who gets the little finger roll. Keon Price, when he's running down the lane, is impossible to stop him as he got two. Alginio hounded by TJ by Flanagan, excuse me. Right now, it's timely passes to get up from the press. You have to be timely on your passes or else it's going to become a turnover. The white team gets into their set. Schneider, three, a little quick release there. He didn't call glass. That's why it came out. <laughs> Price slows things down for the gray team. Out to Amir Williams. Ooh. A little stop and move. Excellent move by Amir Williams. Dribbled it in, faked it, turned around. 
jump shot falls in. We've seen a little bit of him so far, but he can score average just under 13 points in high school per game his senior year out of Linden. I've told you he can do it on both sides of the floor. He can really shoot it, and he can really, I'm telling you, when somebody, look, look at that. A little in and out dribble by Polino. Doesn't get the roll as Raddy gets the ball. Rebound by Raddy. And up comes Keon. Amir Williams. Back out to right. I thought he was going to pull that. And he does here. Missed everything Wide right. that. Algenio looking to push Keon. Price had him, was turned around. See, that's what I'm telling you. That's what I love about him, Algenio. He's going to take it to the big man. He doesn't care who's down there. And he notices that he's going to take it down there to the big man. He may not get the shot to hit the rim, but he may get a foul call. Good to see the point guards getting a little aggressive here. Keon Price, Al Virginia, we talked about that during the, you know, the break between the first scrimmage and the second one. This one's been a little bit, yeah. you know, hot, better pace, faster pace, I should say, yeah. as, uh, you know, coach alluded to, assistant coach alluded to. Um, it's, been, it's been fun to watch. I mean, they're starting to get the feel for it. They're starting to get a little heated. They're starting to know where their players are. They're starting to get a lot of wide open looks, but I would really still love them to keep the, how they were in the beginning on the defensive end, I need them to continue to stay like that because that's going to help them throughout the course when they go play all these other teams. They're going to have to be on their toes at all times. And the pressure has been something that, you know, the white team has done a pretty good job of breaking. Like you said, quick, timely passes. Don't get too, you know, panicky. But they've done a pretty good job of getting the ball past half court and getting into their sets. I'm sorry, that move from Amir Williams down there is really still stuck in my head. <laughs> He stopped half spin, turned around, and drained it for two. Okay. We have Algenio at the line right now, a senior. Rims out for Algenio. See if I Williams gets the rebound. Right now, that was about like three, the last three throws they took, they were all missed. They really need to get a feel for it. Can't be missing free throws when you're playing the real games in the spring whenever they do start playing again. Excellent pass to Amir Williams. Great ball movement here for the great team. Keon Price rims out. Front rim a little short. Algenio with the rebounds coming down. The white team gets into their half court set. Ooh, look at the move. So, ooh. ooh, good God. Look at the move from Paulino's Paulino. Been pretty, Paulino's been very good and shifty. Getting to his spots on the floor as Raddy quickly gets to the other end of the floor, misses a three-point shot. Alginio looking to push. And I love how Paulino really paced himself as he takes it to the rim. Ooh, right there, just missing the jumper. But you can tell he's really loving the play on this Red Hawks team. He's not lacking any confidence, you could say yes. that. Rebound and Keon's coming down with it. 30 seconds left to go in this scrimmage. Nice pass back out to Callender. Malachi down low calling something, gets it to Raddy. Amir Williams looking for a screen. Little alley oop action to Smythe. Blocked by Paulino, kicked back out to Keon Price. And a foul as Callender will go to the line for one with 10 seconds left to go. See, like I said before, they're doing excellent ball movement. They have excellent ball movement, but they keep on going right back to Callender. I want to see who's that next guy. I want to see. I want to see Keon Price give me a little something. You have Amir Williams who could really do it on both ends of the floor. I want to see him kind of handle it a little, a little bit. Get it to Joseph at the top of the key. Make a three. You never know what's going to happen. Coach has to be happy with that possession, though. A lot of passing. Got a good shot. The free throws have just been a little yeah. bit of a concern so far as that pass is over the head of TJ Schneider. That's exactly what I said right now. I think that's the last four free throws that have been missed. And last season, I believe they were shooting about 67% at the line. Ball picked up by Keon Price. Pull up two is no good off the front rim. 11 to four was the score of that scrimmage as we are now, or we will be joined by the athletic trainer here at Montclair State. He'll be coming over here in a little bit. 11 to four, really the white team gave me a lot. I really love what Paulino is giving me so far. Paulino can really bang down low with the best of them. What did you see from, you know,
What did you like in that scrimmage? I mean, there was a lot to like, I think, in that scrimmage. I think there was a lot to like, but the key standout to me is Paulino. He really takes his time to dribble the ball. He got a cross, spin, turned around, put it up for the lay. Right now, he's really caught my eye. Yeah, he's got great size. Again, six foot five, 225 pounds. He could be a key contributor, and he's proving it here yes. tonight. We have the athletic director coming to us right now. Athletic trainer, sorry. Hello, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for joining us here. Um, our first question is, uh, first of all, if you're doing a very good job uh, with the whole pandemic yes. thing, um, how difficult has it been, you know, getting everyone, you know, with the whole testing and everything? Uh, can't be easy, obviously, during this tough time. Well, thank you. It's uh, obviously not been easy, but, you know, our student athletes and staff have, you know, responded in such an extraordinary way. They have, you know, really cooperated. They've done everything. And, you know, that's really made it a lot easier for us, but obviously put us with a lot more timing and uh, difficult ways. But we've uh, weighed through it and uh, it's been great. Of course, you're here caring for them and making sure they're OK. But what type of safety protocols do you go for yourself while you come here to work every day? So obviously we need to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and we get tested on a regular basis. Uh, also, we need to make sure that we're staying within social distancing and masking protocols and stuff. So we do a lot of stuff that way to make sure that we're keeping ourselves safe and limiting our time with uh, social distancing with our student athletes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, obviously it's been, you know, an incredibly difficult season. Um, the spring, you know, spring sports are coming up. What has to happen in order for spring to, you know, be a fluid, smooth spring season for the sports to, you know, go on as, you know, playing? So we're working on those protocols. After Thanksgiving, we're really going to hone in on those protocols and readjust and see what worked really well, what we need to adjust, and what will help us succeed in the future with the spring and winter and all 18 sports going at the same time. So we're really going to look at every protocol and what we did and uh, what we might need to adjust then. Okay, thank you. No? I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for your time. No yep. problem. Thank you. No problem. And right now we are going on to the live third segment. And then after that, guess what's next, Sonny? The dunk contest. Oh, good God. That's really what I'm waiting for. <laughs> Who would you have again? You had Derek Golden. Yeah. I had Malachi Smythe. My guess was just solely off of the height. Of course. Of course. With That's no knowledge, background, or anything. <laughs> I tried to go away from it. I tried to go away from it. I know he has the height. I know he's going to bring something, but I tried to go away from it. I'm unsure. I just want to see I want to see something great. And honestly, I want to see them have fun. They're having a lot of fun out here today. I want to know who the judges are going to be. I mean, I think that might be us. Or they might have our guys. Shout out to our guys that's here from the Red Hot Sport Net Sports Network. Jack Bartek, John Kosaban is with us as well. The third scrimmage will feature on the great team Kieran Flanagan, Irvin Callender the fourth, Paulino, Armir Williams, Tim Alginio, Malachi Smythe, and Devin Cooper. And for the white team, Keon Price, Derek Golden, Joseph Raddy, Christian Booker, TJ Schneider, and Danny Lane. And I think you know, you saw a significant jump, you know, with uh you know how hard they were playing from the first scrimmage to the second scrimmage. I think we can see or you will see in the third scrimmage, just in a few minutes, the team really get after it on both ends of the floor. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I think right now they're about to give it their all because I believe this is the last scrimmage, correct? So if this is the last scrimmage, they're really going to try to give it their all and just go out there and play and have fun. That's really what I'm looking forward to seeing in this last scrimmage. Like you said, though, Francisco Paulino has oh, been a bright yeah. spot tonight. Um, Amir Williams has made some good plays. Yeah. Calendar has really been aggressive. Looking to take control, you know, he is a senior. From what he said on that Zoom call, it looks like he is take, you know, trying to get, you know, the most out of his other players yeah. and, you know, be confident out there, um, getting his shots up. I'm unsure where coach is going to have Paulino during the season. I'm unsure if he's going to have him as a starter, a six man, or coming off the bench or anything like that, a role player. But he is going to be a key piece for this team. The way he can bang down low. And we haven't seen it much because obviously, as Coach said, he's not an official. 
That that wasn't his job. That's why he's a coach. But really, if he gets down low and bangs with the best of him, he can have a lot of foul calls and go to the line to the charity stripe a whole lot for the Red Hawks. And this is again without a couple, you know, some guys that really can play. I mean, Amari Mills. Yes. Out of East Stroudsburg, PA, Miles Mitchell White, you know, could very well lead the team in scoring this year. I was just about to say that we're missing about like five key players that's not even in the scrimmage right now. So imagine with them, oh good God. Peter Oberton, the senior that we spoke to earlier, Stephen Bremen can really shoot the lights out. Uh, Colleen Lambert, the freshman, five foot ten out of Hillside. You know, so it's a you know looking like a promising season for Montclair State. Uh, trying to improve upon, you know, their 11 and 14 record from last season. As the third scrimmage, the players will look to take the floor here. Right now, you can see the coaches really getting into their ear. They want to win this last one. Yeah, this is for bragging rights. These inter-squad scrimmages, <laughs> nobody wants to lose to the other players on the same team. You know, there's a lot of bragging rights here. Because you already know they probably have something planted in there with the coaches in them. Whoever loses... You know, out of the three games, the most out of the three games, you're going to have to wake up early and do suicides tomorrow. So you <laughs> never know. You really never know what's going on. And we will get the jump ball here. Between the six foot nine Danny Lane and Paulina. <laughs> and friendly handshake there <laughs> between before the tip. You don't see that too often. Only an inch of squad scrimmages. I told you right now they're going for it. And I think they gave us an extra two minutes, actually. It's eight minutes instead of six. Uh -oh. Look for them to play very freely right now. Alginio gets it to Derek Golden on the perimeter. Good job by Keon Price denying a backdoor cut there. Nair Williams cut him off. Still sticking with him. Blocked. Exactly what and I told you. Down low, Amir Williams. Get that stuff out of here. Defense really picking up here. Man-to-man -man defense, even off-ball defense, really good here to start. Nice look from Danny Lane. All day in the world for Christian Booker to shoot that. Missed everything on that last one, but don't worry about it. It's just a scrimmage between the two teams. I'm sure he'll pick it up when they actually start facing the teams in the end, Jack. Christian Booker, the sophomore guard, played in two games last season from John, St. John's Vianney High School. Little handoff between Price and Callender. Paulino set mm. very good screens as well. Well, what happened right there, I was just about to say that set a very good screen, which got Callender so deep in the paint, put it up, and he was fouled. But that's going to be all day for Callender if the screens are going to continue to be set like that by Paulino. Strong take there for Callender. We'll get one free throw. Again, just one free throw in these yeah. images. And like I said, the last they've missed about like their last four free throws. Even though it is one free throw, even though it is a scrimmage, you wanna you wanna see them start to get the feel for it and start to knock it down because once it's late in games, those free throws is gonna count. Almost a double dribble there by Derek Golden as he thought he had Danny Lane or Christian Booker there in yeah. transition as they talk it out down the floor. And you can actually see right now the intensity is picking up. Right now the score is one to nothing. Right now the gray squad up by one. You gotta love these scrimmages because the coach is able to stop the play, get like an infinite amount of timeouts and tell them what he wants to see from them on the floor. You can't do that when the play starts really going on and you know the games are on the schedule. I believe Paulino got a away with the little carry over there. Ooh, got nice the sweet jumper shot. to drop. Little pull-up shot and just beyond the free throw line gets it to go for Francisco. And that pass is Aaron. Going to be picked off by Callender with the easy right-handed layup. Joseph Raddy right there couldn't get a hold of the ball. Callender swept it up and put it up for two. The white team looking a little bit out of whack here so far in the third scrimmage as the great team has really picked up their defense. Nice pass there by Danny Lane, swatted out of there. Danny Lane looking to bully down low. Mr. Layup got the rebound, put it up, missed again. But he's just a big man down at six yeah. foot nine. Ooh, nice. nice hero step there by Callender as he's feeling it. Callender felt that he was gonna get set for 
will probably get called for a charge if he would have went straight into him. Stepped around with a pretty Euro for two. Seven to nothing here, great team. Ooh, nice behind as, the back. Ooh. As Lane was shoved to the ground there. Could have been a three-point play as a foul off the ball. Yeah. Lane walking away towards the bench. I hope he's okay. Oh, and right now it's going to be a timeout. Right now I love, love, love what I'm seeing from the great gray squad. They're setting excellent picks, really going, well, excellent screens, really going after it on the defensive end. And right now Calendar is fearless. Yeah, Calendar, you see why he's, a, you know, you see the maturation from year to year. I mean, as Coach Pod said in the, you know, as we talked to him yesterday, he's really matured from year to year, gotten better. His confidence is there and, you know, he's leading, I believe he's leading. There's no stats here. <laughs> but I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's leading the team in points. It's it's either him or Paul, Paulino, one of them, I believe. But still, I'm still yet to see. We've seen a little bit in the second scrimmage, but we've still yet to see the play of the guards. I want to see the battle of the guards. I want to see Keon and Alginio really go at it to show me who's going to take that top spot. And I believe Miles Mitchell-White will really help with that when he returns. Yes. We oh. don't know the extent of the injury, or if there isn't, um, we will find that out in a bit. But um, I keep on forgetting that he's out. Now, as we mentioned, he was the Rookie of the Year in 2017. Yeah. yeah. Second team all and Jack in 2018. Then went on to play for the Christian Brothers University in Memphis, Tennessee. Didn't play and is now back with Montclair. Um, he's a bad man. He kept in close contact with the rest of the team, and I think that speaks volumes yes. for this Montclair State team that, you know, someone is able to move all the way down to Tennessee, a Division II school in the Gulf South, Co South Conference, and now he's back here with Montclair State looking to put up big numbers as he did in his first two years here. He's going to be a great key attribute to this team this season. Play will resume here with Callender passing the ball in to Keon Price. As Coach Sean Rossi talks the calendar. Gets it into Keon. Keon's going to look to set it up. You've seen a lot of crisp, quick passes here from the gray team. Something the white team is, little, is lacking a little bit. Nice little hesitation move yeah. there. Nice fake by, by Amir Williams. Williams. Gets it back, couldn't get it to go, and Rowdy secures the rebound around the back pass to Alginio. Alginio really pushing the pace here. Ooh, nice fake. Yeah, nice little ball fake there yeah. by Rowdy. Back out to Rowdy, little pick and pop. Missed the, it. The legs just aren't there right now for the white team. Right. Rowdy will shoot again. Gets it to fall. I think that's about his third three to scrimmage, correct? Third three to scrimmage and second time it's hit the front rim and rolled in. As Calendar can't find the, the rhythm. Calendar tried to say anything you can do, I can do better. It just did not go his way this time. And I think, you know, they've been practicing. They haven't had too many of these scrimmages. I think the more and more you'll see these scrimmages, the more and more you'll see these shots fall down. Players get into a rhythm and find their, uh, find their shooting stroke. Look at the press that they're putting on him. Like I said, timely passes. Really got to look up. Give it to your fastest guard to take it down. Look what they did. Alginio, correct. Alginio, beautiful pass off the dribble to Raddy, who's yeah. fouled there. Raddy was fouled from behind by Williams, and he's going to go to the line. Great pass there off the dribble yeah. there with the right hand by Alginio. He does a great job of pushing the ball forward, looking up, finding the open... The open player is the senior. Probably so, their best pass. Sorry, probably their best pass, passer on the team. Yeah, yeah, I could believe it. And hey, now, let me give a little props to Joseph Raddy too. You remember that fake pass that he gave him came between the screen? His defender yeah. looked off. Calendar pull up oh shot. My. Not affected by the <laughs> defender coming behind them. Still gets it to go. Tough shot. From behind, nearly blocked. Calendar puts it up for two. 
Booker with the ball in the corner. Out to Alginio. Nice defense there by Keon Price. Really good defense there by Keon Price as he throws it off Alginio. Nice play. <laughs> right there we see the battle of the point guards starting to come into effect. Excellent defense right there by Keon Price on Alginio. Forces the turnover. And that just makes the players better when you're, yeah. you're practicing and you're playing against these guys. And, you know, high competition play like that, going up against each other. Two good guards, one a sophomore, one a senior. Great Ooh. backdoor pass. And another great pass out to the corner for Neil Williams, a three. Good God, an excellent pass to Amir Williams and stroke it down from distance. Pass out to Booker. See if he can redeem himself from three. Still a little short. Flanagan picks the ball up. Keon Price back to Flanagan. Inside the smite. Little power dribble. Gets <laughs> to go. That one was just a little too easy for him. Flanagan is really guarding Arginio as tightly as possible. Arginio easily gets by, though. And the white team has numbers. Ooh, and he knew that one was going in. He just tossed it up and went back. Right now, the school, there's 3.05 remaining, 14 to 9. TJ Schneider with the three. Looked good all the way as he dropped it in from, down, from beyond downtown. And as, as we said, this scrimmage was going to be, this last scrimmage was going to be it. Right now, they're really going at it. We've seen the beginning two scrimmages. They were a little low in points, really trying to get at it defensively. Got a little sloppy, but right now, both teams are intact. I would love to see a fourth scrimmage here, to be honest. I would love to see a sports scrimmage, but I'm telling you. The dunk contest will yeah, be fun. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you're right. 14 to 9 here in the third scrimmage. 14 is the highest amount of points here in one of these segments. But it's going to be a fun last three minutes here as the white team is coming from behind a little bit. They're not going away. Ball will be inbounded here by the gray team, Calendar. On the court here for the gray team, Calendar, Keon Price, Francisco Paulino, Kieran Flanagan, and Amir Williams. And for the white team, TJ Schneider, Alginio, Derek Golden, Danny Lane, and Joseph Raddy. Right now, this is crunch time. Two minutes, 55 remaining. In the last scrimmage, Paulino. There's that post play you wanted, mm. Jan. Look what I said. That's all day for Paulino. All day. Ooh. Ooh. Alginio hounded. I believe they called a foul. It looked like it had to be a foul. <laughs> what did I say down there about Paulino? You give him the ball down low, he's going to finish for you. He makes things happen. That's a great thing when you have a freshman coming into a system like this. That's all day, every day for him. Gets it. Danny Lane tries to take Ooh. it inside. Ooh. A little ambitious on the pass there by Danny Lane. Quickly gets back into the picture. Nice alley oop <laughs> laid in there by Amir Williams. <laughs> I thought we were going to get a slam dunk by Amir Williams, but no, made it look pretty. He's saving it for the dunk contest. I believe he's in the dunk. Yeah, he's saving it for the dunk yeah. contest, folks. Bang! Snyder, another three. There's that three-point shooting prowess <laughs> that we talked about out of Manisquan. I told you, there's going to be no problem. No problem. Paulino back out to Amir Williams, and he's lighting it up. And right now, Amir Williams says, anything you could do, I can do better. You're going to have to step up on him. And now they're trading baskets, and the white, the white team can't afford to do that as they're down by nine with just under two minutes left to go. And I believe the coach just called the timeout. Right now, the white team is really head-on straight, giving it to him. I think the coach has, you know, all the coaches have to be happy though. <laughs> First scrimmage was pretty good. Second scrimmage, you know, a little bit better. You saw some things. And third scrimmage now, 21 to 12 in six minutes. Well, it's because they started to get warmed up. They started to get in the groove of things. They know where they, like I said before, even in the last scrimmage, they started to know where their players were. And right now, the shots are just falling. As you see, he just knocked down the last two three pointers for the white squad. And Mill Williams gave him right back. Right now, they're just having fun out here. The players take the court back again. 
And I really do think Danny Lane's gonna be big for this team. Six foot nine. Um, I believe 205 pounds out of Ridgefield Park. If they want to, you know, rebound the ball, especially on the defensive end, he's going to be huge for them. Got to be big now. He's, he's going to be great, and I believe T.J. Snyder is going to be excellent. As we just seen, he knocked down two threes for the white squad, and he just knocked that the last one that he knocked down for the white squad. Right now, he's just pulling them without any hesitation. Kind of shoots it at the hip, like Steph Curry a little bit. But yeah. <laughs> Ratty, beautiful pass Ooh. and lost by Danny Lane. Love the idea though by Joseph Ratty as he was pulling up for three. Shot's been off a little bit tonight. Back out to Keon Price. Now to Callender. Paulino is gonna go for that mid-ring shot as you mentioned. Look like what dead. I told you. <laughs> Look at what I told you. This guy is incredible. He's been showing out for the scrimmage today. Pull up three for Ratty, too strong. Flanagan looking to push the ball. There's Keon Price by his side who pulls up. In and out. Excellent shot selection right there by Price. He could have tried to look to force it and didn't. Schneider thinking about another three. Now Leginio thinking about the three. Off to the left. Rebounded by Flanagan looking to push. 55 it's seconds remaining in the last scrimmage. 23-12, great team. Calendar will slow things down, knowing time and score. Into the post is Paulino, back out the calendar. Little hesitation dribble, short. Really fighting down low for the rebounds. That's what they're gonna need to do this season. And Schneider leaks out there, easy layup. Yes. 20 seconds left to go here in the third scrimmage. on Price looking to get the last shot here for the gray team. Gets it to Amir Williams in the corner. Calendar back out to Price. Beats out Jenny off the dribble. The reverse is no good. Not enough English. And the long heave is no good. Every time someone shoots that, I think it's going in every time. <laughs> no. You can't, well, unless they're Steph Curry. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> every time he shoots it, I think it's going in every time. But <laughs> Excellent three scrimmages here by both both teams, the gray and the white teams. Actually, we've seen a lot of great things. I'm ready to have the season just start, like, tomorrow. I mean, I'm with you. I'm completely with you. You saw some fun things. You saw some good things on both sides of the ball. From a lot of guys, I mean, Malachi Smith made some great plays. Um, Amir Williams was fantastic. Yes. Um, Calendar was really aggressive. Uh, Keon Price, you know, did a good job of, you know, take, they took care of the ball pretty well. Um, Paulino made a lot of good plays. The mid-range shot was there all game long. That's my guy right long. there. Yeah. I love his style of play. He really poises himself. He paces himself. He doesn't rush anything. That has the little in and out cross, 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 will spin on you, give you the mid-range jumper, or he'll just really take it to you right in your face and just drain it. He's not afraid. He's not afraid to take the shot and to make the play. You don't see that too much around yeah. NBA, college, high school. The yeah. mid-range shot's kind of a lost art. Not with him. Well, he also, the funny thing about his style of play is that when he goes up, it kind of looks like he's hesitating to shoot. So you don't know if you want to bite or not, but he's all, nine times out of ten, he's taking it up. But you're just going to fall for the hesitation. Players are taking a break before the dunk contest, I yeah. believe. Again, the dunk contest will be Malachi Smith, Amir Williams, Derek Golden, and Christian Booker. Not sure how many dunks they get or how, what the format is. Uh. Yeah, I'm unsure how they're going to do it. I think they're probably going to do a first round. Well, well, what I'm thinking is they'll probably have like a free, like, First dunk, first round dunk, and right now as we're about to have Irvin Callender, I believe, come over so we can talk to him. Yes, how you doing? We are now joined by Irvin Callender. Um, what did you? Uh, how did you? Um, 
you know, obviously it's been a long layoff. It's tough. You guys looked a little winded out there in the beginning, but you looked really good out there in the, in the first, first, second, and third scrimmages. How is it there to get back out with the guys? Uh, it feels really good. You know, we had a long, long, long time off. I'm sorry, can you turn me down, sir? Yeah. Uh, we had a long off season, so it feels good. It feels great to compete with uh, my teammates. We love each other t uh, a lot. Being that you guys are playing with each other, against each other, with everything, stuff like that, how do you feel like you guys have improved, and what do you guys feel like you guys have improved on? Uh, I feel like we improved on sharing the ball, keeping the pace. Like It's a lot of um, underclassmen, and I feel like the upperclassmen just pushing them and pushing them during practice. So it feels good to come out here and compete in front of you guys and on live, so it feels really good. And you mentioned some underclassmen. We saw some great plays from Amir Williams, Francisco Paulino. What did you see from them, and what can we expect from them this season? Uh, Francisco, I feel like he could be rookie of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, he has a, a motor that does not get turned off. He always contacts me, Irv, let's get in the gym, let's go outside, let's work out. He, he has the best fundamentals. You know, he's from Bergen, um, Bergen County, I believe, and he got, he's, he's gritty. Um, and the mayor, he's from Essex County, he's from Linden. Um, he's a wing, so I feel like um, he's looking up to me, and I feel like I got to do what I, I got to do to push him. We've seen that in, at the charity stripe, you've improved every single season that you've been here. One season you were shooting 57% in your freshman year. Your sophomore season you were shooting about 63, 62%. Now you're shooting 64% last season. What mechanics have you changed in your form when you're at the line? What has helped you really improve at the line? Uh, I just feel like I just became more focused on my form during the off season. You know, my, uh, my father, he always... He always still he always started me in my mechanics. He or when you get to the foul line, focus. Like don't rush it. Who cares how many people's out there? Just stay focused. And I feel like me doing that in the off season. I feel like during this season, my percentage is gonna go way up even more. I feel like. All right. Well, we want to say thank you for joining us. And thank, have a good one. Thank you. Wait, Appreciate one more it. thing. One more thing. Who do you think is winning this dunk contest? Oh, hands down, Malachi, man. Oh, this, wow. this, this this is not even a competition. I, we should have did a three point competition and make it a little fun <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank appreciate you for having it. me. I appreciate it. No yeah. problem. Wow, I think that's three to nothing. I'm the only one that thinks someone else is winning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, who knows? You can you have the underdog. I have the favorite. <laughs> but um everyone's saying Malachi Smith. You said Derek Golden. We will see. There's a reason he's on there. They didn't yeah, that's throw him on here. <laughs> And right now we have Keon Price joining us. How you doing today, Keon? How you doing? What have you seen so far in the scrimmage that you love so far from the team? Uh, the energy. The energy is immac uh, immaculate right now. We've been in and out every day of practice, putting in pain, putting in this hard work, and this is all just paying off. We're just having fun out here. Now we didn't see uh, Miles Mitchell-White or Amari Mills and Stephen Bremen, Peter Oberton Jr., or Kaleem Lambert. What can we expect from those guys this season, some guys that – you know, obviously didn't suit up today. Oh, those guys are amazing, like amazing. What you see out here, this is just the surface. Those guys, that's like an iceberg under us that, that they're just going to come in and build us immac crazy. It's going to be crazy. How do you feel like you've improved throughout this offseason? Um, this offseason, it was very hard. Going through quarantine, a lot of gyms were locked down. It was just a lot of in-house workouts, running, getting as many shots up as I can, just trying to get in any gym that I can and just work. And one last question. Um, after the scrimmage, you know, the three separate scrimmages, what are some things that you still need to improve on or some things that Coach has been stressing during practice? Um, one thing that he's been stressing is just seeing the floor more, um, uh, keeping handle on the ball and just shooting, getting the shooting up, and then we're just working. Okay, thank you. We thank appreciate you. your time, Keon. Thank you. And right now they're getting ready for this dunk contest. Right now you have Malachi, correct? I have Malachi. I think your guy's stretching right now. On the, um, <laughs> I think I'm telling you. I think, laced up. I think we're about to see something special from him. I'm not changing my pick. I think he's going to win it. Yeah, I think it's – oh, they have the judges there. Oh, Jack's a judge. How did he make it on there? <laughs> I don't know. 
We, will, we are yet to see who the first dunker will be. Again, Malachi Smith goes six foot six, 205 pounds. Amir Williams, six foot four, 190 pounds. Derek Golden, six foot three. And Christian Booker, six foot one. Impressive for Christian Booker. He's got the. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say that right now. Malachi just has the huge height advantage on them all. But like Keon Price said, I mean, the energy we saw yes. was very impressive. I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, or we mentioned, in the beginning it looked a little bit hectic, but that's to be expected. Well, I think what it is is when you've been away from something that you literally grew up playing in and out every single day and they tell you you can't play it no more, the time you come get to play it, you're definitely going to give it your all and you're going to love it. And this is the first... <laughs> Christian Booker. Christian Booker with a little 360 dunk. Ooh. That was nice. Everyone's <laughs> saying Malachi Smith. That was pretty nice. <laughs> Malachi Smith, sorry. That was pretty nice. Ooh. Oh, wait. They gave him an 8, a 7, an 8, a 9. Look at Jack with the 8 <laughs> there. That was actually pretty impressive for a first dunk. Yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah. like I said, everyone's saying Malachi's yeah. right. That was not bad, especially first yeah. dunk. It's not easy to get the first one down. Uh, I would have given him a nine. Come on, Jack. You can do better than that. Acting like he can do something better. Yeah. <laughs> this one for Derek Golden. Ooh, I told Woo! you. I told you. I told you. <laughs> a little lob to himself under the arm, two hands. I told slam. you. I told you that one got a 10, an 8, an 8. Oh, Jack with another 8. He's not impressed. And an 8. Jack. 1, 10, and 3 eights. So 34 there for Derek Golden. What was the first What? I'm unsure. We were so in tune with the dunk, we couldn't even get it. This one here. Whoa, they're giving it to. Oh, a little oh. help here. Flanagan's about to help him out. First, somewhat of a prop used. Oh. I thought we were going to see a car pull through here. <laughs> like Blake Griffin. Oh, no. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. That would have shut everything down. I would have ran out of here and just went home. What about the pass there from Flanagan? I don't even know what you call that, but look nice. Look at the, what type of pass is this? Oh. Now, see, there's a lot of pressure on him to make it on this try because this is an incredible duck. If he would have nailed it on the first attempt, he probably would have got all tens across the board. But since we're seeing it three times, nice. finally gets it. Yeah, I felt like... I felt working on that. Yeah, I felt like the third time, see, Jack gave him a seven, and I feel that from Jack because when you... When you do it three times, when you attempt it three times, it's going to diminish it a little bit. Takes away from a little bit of the excitement. Yeah. But still creative. I think the creativity is there. <laughs> and right now, that gives him a 31. So I that believe that's he's in third place. Yeah. Excellent pass right there by Flanagan. What type of pass is that? And Off this is the, the presumptive favorite, Malachi Smith. Smythe. Woo! Uh. Double pump little like mm. almost reverse dunk there by Smythe and we will see the score <laughs> two nines and two eights right there that's a 34 a 34 so tied with I believe Derek Golden mm -hmm. that was and you could see right there when Malachi went up for the dunk and he actually made the dunk coach Potts turned around just twitched a little because of how disgusting that dunk was All right we're about to start up round 2 this is interesting now it's getting good yeah Ooh, uh, switches hands from the right to the yeah, left. Yeah, that's that's tough. 
That's tough. He finished it with his left? Not easy. Mm. That's tough. I might have to give that a 9. A 10. And we still have one more judge waiting for it. That's a 37. 37 there for Christian Booker. Now these are the moments you miss though. Yeah. We miss this. Yeah. You could tell they miss this. You know, look how much fun they're having out on the floor. You could tell the chemistry's there. I mean, these guys really love playing with each other. You just see there's so much joy between them all right now. But this, oh, I, oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no he way. From the Wait, he might he might pull it off. He got my boy's kick song, LeBron King James. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh. Oh, with the call him alone yeah. hand behind the head. Yeah, that would have been tens all across the board because he looked at all the judges. They all looked like looked at each other once he put his hand up behind his head. He's got to paste himself. Oh. Right now, he's got to come up with something else. He's got to get creative yeah. here on his third try. Try something new, I think. Uh, he just had to get something up. Oh, man. Let's see what the scoring. That's going to be like a seven. Yeah. Jack is not messing around here. <laughs> That's a 27. Well, you can't blame him. It was a regular two-handed dunk. If he w dunk, if he would have gotten the dunk the first time, <laughs> yeah, who has coach just said it as well. Jack's being a tough judge, showing no love here, Jack. Ruthless. Mm. Williams mm. pulls himself up <laughs> too after the dunk. Mm. A little showmanship. You got to have that in order to get the, ju the judges going a little bit. And right there, a 34 for Williams. No. Smythe. Ooh. Not even a running start there. Through the legs. Mm. Almost had it. Oh. Oh. oh, he tried to get his yeah. elbow in there, but it slipped out. Oh, watch Jack is going to give him like a six. I was waiting for the Vince Carter, the let's go home. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're having a hard time on this one. That's a 34 again. And is this now the last is, round? I believe so. I think my guy is out. I think Derek is out. Now, I'm unsure if this is the last round or if they have two yeah, more dunks that they're doing. I'm waiting on word from the coaches. I believe the finalists are... Booker, Williams, yeah. and Malachi. Mm -hmm. But... Which eliminates Derek Golden. I'm sorry, Jonathan, but... Mm. Ooh. That was nice. Perfect pass. Ooh. Good execution. Yeah. That dunk. He got up high for that. He got up pretty high for it. Ooh. This is turning into a game of who can get Jack to yeah. get you a, a nine or <laughs> that, something higher than an eight. That's a 35 for Booker. If you want to see Jack get a, give someone a 10, you just got to, like, bring up Zach Levine up in his gym yeah. or something to shut it down. Ooh! 
and it opened the ball. <laughs> the, <laughs> the ball almost rammed into the cameraman <laughs> as well. Everyone's got to watch that one. Yeah. Malachi's up there to dunk. Oh, okay. Oh, oh ball oh, came I was down. waiting for that ball <laughs> to come down and fall in. <laughs> that would be a 10. Well, now he has to come up with something different. Third attempt here for Smythe. Ooh. Wow. Okay, no, that was still tough. That was nice. He had hang time on there. And that was something a little bit different each yeah. time. But you gotta like, he has it in his bag. Ooh, he got a 10. And that's the winner. And that's 38. 38 points there from Alakai Smythe, that he is the winner of the Intra Squad dunk contest. Uh, I, I owe you something. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. But we didn't make a bet, so I'm good for today. But dinner on you. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm broke. I'm broke. I ain't got it like that. And right there, they're giving a round of applause. Well, Sonny, it's been excellent working with you here tonight. It's been a lot of fun. It's been great working with you, Jonathan. We saw some great three scrimmages. We saw a great dunk contest. Yeah, but we're not done yet because we just have to bring Coach Potts. But this was an excellent start. Um, we don't know what the schedule is going to look like because obviously with the whole COVID-19, there's always something new coming up. So we're just hoping that Hopefully in the spring, we're hoping Montclair will continue to have spring sports. We're all crossing our fingers yeah. here as interns. Anyone who just likes sports in general, Montclair State sports in general, you know, you got you to gotta hope for the best. Everyone stay safe during these tough times. And a round of applause to our Red Hawks Sports Network crew that all came out to the game tonight as well as the athletic trainer, Terry yes. Temple. Much deserved. Just the way this team is engaged, you can see how engaged they are listening to coach. Everyone seems to be buying in. It's gonna be a fun season yeah, it's in gonna the spring. It's gonna definitely be a fun season. You can see that they just love playing with each other. They don't get too high or too low. They don't think anyone's too better, way better than the next. They really love playing as a team, and that's what's really going to take you far. And that's what he stressed. He stressed yeah. it's a collective effort. I mean, they lost, you know, just to mention a few guys, Eddie Amado, Justin Porter, Nate Nahirney, Jalen Parham, um, Akbar Hoffman. And these guys but they're were bringing in a lot. Yeah, they're bringing in a lot of guys who can play, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch, and uh, we will see what spring brings. And those guys that they lost, those guys were tough. They really gave it their all every single night. Great seniors. Yeah, and we asked um, Keon Price. I mean, the guys who didn't play today, Miles mm -hmm. Mitchell White, Amari Mills, Kaleem Lambert, Stephen Bremen, Peter Oberton Jr. Those guys are, no, you know, they can play. He used, those are guys who can all contribute. I'm ready to see them play because he used one word to describe them all, and he just kept on saying it, immaculate. So there has to be something special about those guys that's sitting out right there that's just going to take this team to the next level. And they all bring a little bit different, you know, things to the team. Overton, inside game. Steven Bremen can shoot the three. Kaleem Lambert's another guard who can bring the ball up. Amari Mills, another guard, freshman. And Miles Mitchell-White can do everything as he yeah. proved his first two years here. So I'm telling the takeaway I took for it. I'm just going to keep on stressing it. I'm unsure what coach is going to do. He's going to hear it. I'm pretty sure he's going to come to me and tell me something that I kept on talking about. Paulino is the guy. He might be the guy for the future. You've yeah. been saying it. We saw it yeah. in front of our eyes. He kind of has a I'm, little bit of that old man's game, yeah, like I'm, mid range game. Like I'm very impressed with his game. I'm very impressed of how patient he is. And if he puts his head to it, he's going to get his shot off any moment he wants. He's very good down low on the defensive end and get rebounds. I would just like him s to see him move his feet a little quicker on the defensive end but other than that he's going to be big for this team two things that they stressed or coach stressed most um on that zoom call you know, when we talked to him yesterday taking care of the ball mm -hmm. 
We saw a little bit of, you know, a few turnovers, but that's to be expected, especially in a scrimmage. And rebounding the ball, not too many offensive rebounds, so. And right now we're going to have with this Coach Potts. What's up, What's up, Coach Potts? Could you hear us? I got gotcha. you. How do you feel like this scrimmage went overall? Uh, I thought it was a great night. Um, you know, obviously it's a, a, a different situation than any of us are used to. Um, but I thought we really got a lot out of it. Um, I think even just having you guys here and kind of setting up the gym and giving them a little game-like experience, especially for the young guys. Um, so it went as good as I thought it could. We started a little slow in that first segment, and I think as we kind of went through it, you could see guys get more comfortable and kind of growing. So I thought it was a great situation and a great experience for, for all involved. Yeah, and we saw a lot of promising things from um, Amir Williams and Francisco Paulino. You know, some great things from young guys. Uh, what can we expect from them this year? We asked Keon Price, and he said a lot. You know, we can expect a lot from those guys. Yeah, I think, you know, we were high on this recruiting class. Uh, Coach Rossi did a heck of a job of, of getting involved with guys, um, you know, and, and it was our first recruiting class, obviously. So I think we, we brought in a lot of guys that fit what we're trying to do and, and are, are a good mix for what we have coming back. I think those young guys have a chance to be really good players. I thought Amir was phenomenal tonight. Um, you know, his activity and his – he just has a knack for the ball, and, and we kind of knew that when we recruited him. He just always seemed to kind of end up around the basketball in the right spots. Um, I think he's getting really comfortable with the running and pressing and what goes into being a college player. And then Fran's got a little bit of that unorthodox game. You know what I mean? He's just a little we, – we always kind of joke around with him. He's got a little Draymond Green to him. You know, he, he just kind of – actually said the same thing. Yeah, he just kind of got that. It's a little unorthodox, and you're not quite sure when he's going to shoot it, and, he, and he's a little bit, um, you know, odd around the rim and can shoot from different angles. So I, we expect – expect those guys to be in the rotation when we get into January. We expect them to be able to contribute. I think when you add those guys in with some of the guys tonight, but then the guys we're missing, Steve Bremen, Miles Mitchell-White, uh, Coop was out tonight. I think you, you start mixing those guys in, and I really like the depth that we could potentially have. In what ways do you feel like this team has improved from the team last year? I think probably just being more comfortable with the style and the system that, that we're playing in terms of running and pressing. And, and um, you know, we work a lot on footwork and pivots, and we saw some of those show up tonight. Um, so I think they just have a better understanding of the overall concept and schemes that we're trying to put together. And I think the young guys have been, have been picked it up really quick, which is always, you know, I always say the best thing about freshmen is when they become sophomores. <laughs> um, you know, but those guys have really picked things up quick, and they've been able to adjust to a lot of things. So I think that – has really helped us grow a little bit, you know, quicker than I thought we would have. Um, you know, but overall, I just think a confidence and understanding, okay, this is how we're playing, this is what we're trying to do, those kind of things. And we've seen a little play from Alginio and Keon Price really going at it with the battle of the guards. Yep. But we also do have a couple of guards out. What do you think? What do you think about the guard battle position right yeah, now? Yeah, I, I think it's good. We're deep in the backcourt, yeah. um, which was one of the areas we needed to kind of focus on because we graduated Nate and we graduated uh, JP, um, and those guys played a lot of minutes in the backcourt. Um, so, you know, bringing Miles in, he can play, you know, anywhere between one, two, or three. Uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to slide Coop back to being a primary point guard. So really in that point spot, you know, you got uh, Keon, Tim, and Coop that, that are going to, you know, kind of be battling it out and I the thing for us is we're going to play more guards this year we'll, we'll play two point guards at a time if we need to and those kind of things um, and we're even missing one Clean Lambert who's a freshman uh, had shoulder surgery um, so he's he's not in the rotation but look, I really love our depth at guard I like the versatility of them and I think each guy brings a little bit something different to the table and one more quick question uh, on the zoom call yesterday you mentioned uh, or Irvin Callender mentioned the chemistry everyone's staying in contact with each other during the pandemic in this tough time it seems like you know from our end you can really see it everyone's engaged listening to the coaches everyone seems to really like playing alongside each other how much does that benefit the team yeah I think you know in in college basketball or really college athletics in general um, there's a lot of talented teams there's a lot of good coaches and those kind of things usually the thing that that separates you at the end of the day is what you just said the chemistry the togetherness you know can guys stay stay connected to each other when things are going good or when they're going bad um, and I think this group is starting to develop that and that's really exciting to see because again I think that's really as critical as anything is um, the the you know the unity that they have um, to be connected to each other to really feel like a family um, to help each other out, pick each other up, encourage each other. And the older guys have done a good job of kind of explaining that to the young guys, and the young guys have bought right into that. So um, as a coach, it's great to see.
Um, you know, I think it, I think it's really something that will continue to grow over time. We'll continue to Zoom with them uh, the next month or so until we're back together and, and do some uh, individual meetings that way and FaceTime and those kind of things just to keep trying to build that, those relationships. And last question, was the dunk contest a no-brainer for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew who, who I had going in. <laughs> I figured Mally would be tough to beat. Uh, Seabook put up a pretty good fight. Um, you know, yesterday when they were in practice messing around with different stuff, uh, you know, it didn't look like anybody was going to get close to him. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they, gave him a, they gave him a pretty good run for his money tonight. So uh, before we go, I just want to thank you guys. As I said, um, you know, as I said earlier to our guys, I, I've done this for 21 years. The amount of work that you guys put in up there at the Red Hawk Sports Network, the behind-the-scenes stuff, um, you know, you, you give us a big-time feel, which is great in small college athletics. Um, so hats off to you guys. you, you got bright futures uh, individually, but just in general, everything you guys do up there is, is first class all the way. Thank you. It means a lot, Coach. Thank you, yeah. Coach, and good luck on the season. Yep. Sounds good. Have a great nice Thanksgiving. Yep, you too. All right. And I think that's it for the first time we've been here in eight months here at Montclair, the Panzer Athletic Center. Well, Sonny, it's been an honor working with you tonight, but – my, oh, my, I have a lot to go look upon for this team coming up next season. Yeah, no, it's going to be real fun. We heard it from Coach. Uh, it's a pleasure working alongside you as well. Um, just some things, you know, that he noticed, like we noticed. Um, some really good play from Amir Williams, Paulino. Just some really good things to look forward to. Uh, the guard play is going to be something to really look forward to uh, in the spring. So I think that wraps it up from the Panzer Athletic Center. I am Sonny Bartell alongside Jonathan Edmond. Thank you guys and have a good night.